Hey science nerds, genome geeks and DNA detectives, welcome back to our deep dive into the fascinating world of science. Today we're unraveling the complex yet compelling topic of gene editing and we're shining the spotlight on its rising star CRISPR-Cas9. Picture this, a tool so precise and powerful it's like having an undo button for our genetic code. Now that's something to geek out about. But before your imagination runs wild with visions of laser-eyed velociraptors, let's dial it back a bit. Gene editing isn't about creating fantastical beasts. It's about making meticulous alterations to our DNA, the master blueprint of life. These changes hold the potential to mend genetic disorders, augment our traits, and who knows, even resurrect extinct species. Yes, we're looking at you, woolly mammoths. Now, let's talk shop. How does this genetic wizardry actually work? Enter CRISPR-Cas9, a brilliant system we've borrowed from bacteria. Yes, those microscopic organisms are way more sophisticated than they appear. Picture CRISPR as a pair of molecular scissors, with Cas9 as the skilled surgeon guiding them. They zero in on specific genes with incredible precision, snip out the problematic part, and let the cell's natural repair functions sew in the desired modification. It's like a souped-up version of gene therapy, minus the hefty lab gear and radioactive isotopes. But wait, isn't this meddling with nature? You're right to ask. As with any powerful tool, there are ethical considerations aplenty. From designer babies to genetically enhanced athletes, we must tread carefully. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. We must encourage diligent research, foster open dialogue, and establish ethical guidelines to ensure CRISPR is wielded for the greater good. So, let's keep our sci-fi dystopias where they belong, on the big screen. It's about making precise changes to our DNA, potentially fixing genetic diseases, enhancing our traits, and even bringing back extinct species. So, how does this gene editing magic work? Enter CRISPR-Cas9, a system borrowed from bacteria, Yes, these microscopic organisms that we often associate with diseases are now the unsung heroes of modern genetic engineering. Let's break it down. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Quite a mouthful, right? But think of it as a GPS system that guides the Cas9 enzyme to the exact location in our vast genetic landscape. Once it reaches the destination, Cas9, like a skilled surgeon, performs the cut. It's a pair of molecular scissors snipping away the faulty genes with precision. Now, you might wonder, what happens after the cut? Well, the magic doesn't stop there. Our cells have an inbuilt repair mechanism. Once the faulty gene is cut, this mechanism kicks in and starts repairing the DNA. But here's the catch. While the repair is being done, scientists can introduce a new, corrected version of the gene. The cell then incorporates this corrected gene into the DNA and voila, the faulty gene is replaced. It's like gene therapy on steroids, minus the bulky lab equipment and radioactive isotopes. It's a simpler, more efficient way of fixing our genetic flaws. But don't let the simplicity fool you. The potential applications of CRISPR-Cas9 are immense. It could help us cure genetic diseases, improve crop yields and even bring back extinct species. But like any powerful tool, it needs to be used responsibly. So next time you squirm at the sight of bacteria, remember, they've given us the power to rewrite life's blueprint. The future of gene editing is here and it's called CRISPR-Cas9. It's like gene therapy on steroids minus the bulky lab equipment and radioactive isotopes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't this playing God? And that's a valid concern. We're dealing with the very fabric of life and it's only natural that questions of ethics and morality pop up. So let's address the elephant in the room, the ethical considerations of gene editing. First off, we've got to consider the potential for misuse. Yes, the idea of creating superhuman athletes or genius babies might sound appealing, but where do we draw the line? Who gets to decide what traits are desirable and which ones are not? And once we start editing our genes, What's stopping us from sliding down a slippery slope towards a society that values people based on their edited genes rather than their natural abilities or character? Then there's the issue of accessibility. CRISPR-Cas9 might be a game changer, but as with all game changers, 
there's a risk of creating a divide between the haves and the have-nots. Will gene editing be a privilege available only to the rich, further widening the gap between socio-economic classes? And let's not forget the potential for unintended consequences. We might edit a gene with the best of intentions, but what if we accidentally trigger a chain reaction leading to unexpected health issues down the line? After all, our understanding of the genome is still evolving. We're like kids in a candy store, dazzled by the possibilities, but not fully aware of the long-term effects of our choices. So where does this leave us? It's clear that gene editing has immense potential, but it's equally clear that we need to tread carefully. We need rigorous research to understand the full implications of our actions. We need open discussions to reach a consensus on the ethical boundaries. And most importantly, we need robust ethical guidelines to ensure that CRISPR and other gene editing technologies are used for the greater good. The bottom line is this. Gene editing is a powerful tool, and like all powerful tools, it can be used for good or ill. It's up to us to determine which path we take. We need careful research, open discussions and ethical guidelines to ensure CRISPR is used for good, not to create a dystopian future straight out of a sci-fi film. But let's lighten the mood, shall we? Imagine the possibilities. Picture this. You're at a summer cookout, swatting away mosquitoes that only seem to love you. Wouldn't it be great to just edit out your mosquito-attracting genes? You could be the life of the party without a single bug bite. Or maybe the party pooper, if you're the type who enjoys a good swatting challenge. Now, let's talk about hair, or rather, the lack of it. Balding can be a bummer. But what if you could simply edit your genes to give yourself the luscious mane, of a lion. There's just one tiny side effect. You might also roar every time you get a bit angry. But hey, at least no one will ever steal your parking spot again. And for those of us who've always dreamed of understanding quantum physics, gene editing might just hold the answer. Why spend years grappling with complex equations when you can simply edit your intelligence genes and become the next Einstein? Just remember, with great smarts come great confusion. So don't blame me if you suddenly find yourself lost in a multiverse of quantum entanglement and superpositions. Now, these scenarios might sound far-fetched, but the truth is, we are just scratching the surface of what gene editing can do. The potential is, quite literally, mind-boggling. And while we're still in the early stages, who knows, the future might just be edited, one gene at a time. So keep dreaming, keep wondering, and keep laughing about the absurd possibilities. Because who knows, someday you might just be able to make yourself glow in the dark, or at least grow a tail. Just remember to use this power responsibly, or you know, at least make sure it's funny. Edit your intelligence genes and become the next Einstein. Just don't blame me if you get lost in the multiverse. Remember, gene editing is still in its early stages, but the potential is mind-blowing, literally. We've journeyed through the intricate world of gene editing and CRISPR-Cas9 today and I hope you're as excited about this scientific frontier as I am. We've seen how these molecular scissors borrowed from the humble bacteria can precisely alter our genetic code. We've explored the possibility of curing genetic diseases, enhancing our traits and even resurrecting extinct species. Can anyone say, welcome back Dodo Bird? Of course, we've also touched upon the ethical considerations. With the power to play with life's building blocks comes a great responsibility. We need to ensure that this technology is used for the betterment of humanity, not its detriment. So as we step into this brave new world, let's tread carefully with our moral compass in one hand and our scientific curiosity in the other. And let's not forget the fun side of gene editing. Who wouldn't want to be immune to mosquito bites or have the mane of a lion? But remember, with great hair comes great responsibility. So what's next, you ask? The future of gene editing is as bright as a glow-in-the-dark human. It's a rapidly evolving field, and who knows what amazing discoveries lie just around the corner. Now, it's over to you. What are your thoughts on gene editing? 
what would you edit in your jeans if you had the chance? Drop a comment below and let's get the conversation started. And if you've enjoyed delving into the fascinating world of gene editing with me, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell too, so you won't miss out on our next scientific adventure. Until next time, stay curious, stay awesome, and stay tuned for more. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and yes, heard it subscribe to this channel